the City Council of Pueblo have at least these 10 express powers which emanate from the Charter. The, the City Council has the power to dedicate and abandon street and alleys. City Council has the power to make contracts. City Council has the power to initiate independent audits. Section 310, the power to create new departments, but may not dis discontinue any department established by this charter. Section 312, power to regulate and issue licenses and permits. Power to direct the finance director and or city manager to issue surety bonds. Power to pass motions, ordinances, and resolutions, and the power to appropriate funds. So they don't get the budget to begin with, but they get to approve the budget. So since the mayor or the city manager starts the budget, then they can only get, get a couple things, but they won't be able to get the entire. One of the most important powers, I think, of the city council, the city council can investigate the city's employees. So. Whereas it seems like the police don't have a check, the city council could be that check on the police. They could investigate the police. And it's not just the police department, it's any of the city's employees. There was the Sperry Corporation, Fred Weisbrod. Fuck on this, on this issue, fuck Fred Weisbrod because Fred Weisbrod spent $8 million on the Sperry Corporation. He was a city manager in the 70s for about 14 years. So Fred Weisbrod spent $8 million on the Sperry Corporation. They sold all their assets two years later. So it was $8 million just basically thrown in the, in the toilet. So $8 million. He should have been investigated. What was the connection? Was that his buddy? Did he just give $8 million to his friends? Uh, police department, the funding for the police department is over one-third of the budget. So we're already spending one-third of the budget on the police. So we need to make sure we have good police. And if there is some wrongdoing or there's some crime that's happening within the police department, it would be up to the city's employees. It would be up to the city council to investigate them. And the city manager and the mayor, they would be city employees too. They get paid by the city. So anybody that's paid by the city's employees, the city council. So actually, technically, city council could investigate one of their own. City Council could investigate any of the personnel, any of the different departments. There are 15 departments. How many departments can you name, Pueblo City? These are all departments built for you. These are all departments built for you. There's Aviation Department. There's Fire and Police. There's Public Works, Park and Recreation, Waste. There's Aviation, Finance, Fire, Health, Law, Parks and Recreation, Personnel, Police, Public Works, and Purchasing, Finance. Health, that's interesting. So health, we don't have universal health care, but what does our city's health department do? Are they streamlining? Are they working everything out? Are they making, you know? So that's and then the law department, so that's probably defending the, you know, the city employees. What are these departments doing for me? What's the aviation department doing for me? Are they going to have free tickets one day? Are they going to have a poor people free tickets to poor people day? One day, the finance department, I mean, I understand what the fire department does. I understand what the police department does, parks and uh, recreation and public works. Now, purchasing, personnel, you know, I know, I understand, like, you know, the point of those, but what are they doing for me? What are these departments doing for me? Fifteen departments, and the city council could create new departments, but they cannot discontinue any department established by this charter. So this charter had established those 10, aviation, finance, fire, health, law, parks and recreation, personnel, police, public works, and purchasing. And then over the years, these five departments have been added, planning and community, housing and citizen services, wastewater, stormwater, information technology. So housing and citizen services. Is that our ombudsman? If I have a question, do I, am I supposed to call housing and citizen services? Because I'm a citizen. So what services does housing and citizen services provide? Also, it's housing. Are these the ones that are taking care of the homeless? Housing. Do we, do we all get free housing? What does the housing and the citizen services actually do? And then the planning and community, is that our local zoning board? Is that what planning and community is? 3.6 also tells uh, the city council that they have the power to build libraries and to pay for their employees. So they get to construct libraries. So that's an express power from the charter that the city council gets. 
So information technology, stormwater, wastewater. What's the difference between stormwater and wastewater? Why two different departments? And we got the water board. I mean, why does the water board, we have five water board members and a director and an entire, you know, uh, establishment of the water board. And on top of that, we got wastewater and stormwater. And are both of those taxes on my water bill? I know the stormwater is, and I'm wondering if wastewater is sewage. So that means I'm paying for both of these departments, wastewater and stormwater and the water department. It just seems like we got, you know, all these extra departments. Maybe we need to have specific stormwater would be the, you know, uh, line in the street so the stormwater goes into it. Wastewater is the sewer. Specifically do not know what the planning and community department does or the housing and the citizen services department. I don't know what either one of those departments do. Nor do I know what the, I know what they're supposed to do, personnel, but I don't, what does personnel department do for me? Probably not a damn thing. They're probably, you know, they got their list of all their friends and shit. So personnel, what are they doing for me, right? What are uh, parks and recreation? They're building some parks for me. The police, they're protecting and serving me. The fires, you know, putting out the fire. Aviation, I assume, that's working on the airport and they're keeping, you know, prices low. Finance department, that would be them borrowing money and trying to pay their bills. So that would be, I would audit the finance department as soon as I got in there which they have the power to do, the power to initiate audits, Section 310, the power to make contracts, Section 39. So I wish that I knew what all these, the 35 gives the power to investigate the city's employees to the city council. So city council can have their own trial. They can have their own trial. They can have the witnesses bring some evidence. They can force witnesses to testify. And they have to go to city council and they'll have to testify you know, at a specific date and time. So that's a, that's a power that the city council has. That's a way we could check the police. It's a way that we could check the entire government. The city council, a lot of the times when it comes to the three branches of government, a lot of folks say it's the legislature, the power to make laws, to write the laws. That's the actual true power that people have. When you write laws, too, you can write the laws to be so specific to the minute detail and since you're the legislature, it has to be followed to the minute detail. So that's how the legislature throughout the years has grabbed more power by when they pass the law, they micromanage the shit out of it and make sure every... Another group of people that we can investigate too, the contractors. So we have a power to make contracts. We can make deals with contracts. So if we want to build a park, we'll get, you know, some construction contractor and, you know, contract it out, sign some sort of contract, and then they'll go ahead and do it. Now they've got to build a damn park, and they've got to do a good job at it. And if they don't, if they squander the funds, well, we get to investigate them because they made a deal with us, and it's in our town. They didn't do what they're supposed to do. We can, you know, we can investigate it. We can also do an independent audit of it. And if there's wrongdoing, then they could be arrested too. But that's when it comes to the contractors. We have a power to make contracts. And since they're contracting with us, we've got the power to investigate them and to audit them. So just to make sure we understand all the powers for city council, we have the power to create new departments, re regulate issue licenses and permits. So I guess that's hunting, bus drivers, marijuana, li marijuana licenses, is, you know, uh, probably the licenses and permits, businesses license, occupational license. Now, bus drivers and hunting license and uh, driver's license, shit like that. So... I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's a state thing, So, but it says that we, the city council has the power to do so. So I don't think the city council could take away the driver's license, but I think like marijuana licenses, business licenses, they would be guaranteed to do, but they probably could offer marriage licenses too. It, it just says issue licenses and permits. So whatever licenses and permits city council thinks they need to pass is what they can pass. Then city council can direct the finance director and or city manager to issue surety bonds in such amounts as the council may determine. So that means the loans, they can, city council can determine, they can write the exact amount of loan to the city manager. This is just uh, as an example, I'm not, the uh, water tax, the water bill tax for street repairs. So if we get our street repairs, then that would be the bonds. So if we need to borrow some money in order to get those street repairs going, then the city council could direct the finance director and city manager to issue the surety bonds. So that's section 314, the power to pass motions, ordinances, and resolutions. This is also a major power. This is lawmaking right here. So motions 
and ordinances. Ordinances is the power of law, so that's a new rule. Motion is saying we're going to do something, so usually appropriate funds. And they can appropriate funds. They can do line by line funds. But what I meant when I wrote this with the budget is that the city manager writes the budget and then they give it to the city council. So it gives the city manager a lot of power because they start the budget. So they could go ahead and say this is the funding levels for all these different departments. But it's up to the city council to. So they cannot hire and fire people, but they can cut them off when it comes to the power of the budget. So you can't hire the brand new director of law, but you can make sure the, the law department has no money. You can cut all the money out. Now, you'll have to get you know, the city manager to eventually sign off on it, but I think the way that you would do it, if I'm in city council, I'm going to get a coalition. I'm going to get a coalition of four people, and I'm going to take that budget away. I'm going to take that budget away, and then I'm going to look at the budget, and then I'm going to offer a budget, and then we're going to take the two budgets, and then we're going to reconcile the two. That's, that's a good city council person right there. Try to take that budget. Budget is uh, a soft power. So the city manager says, well, here's my budget, and I, I feel like what would happen is that you could argue about this one little thing or that one little thing and just maybe get a couple things. But if you want to get that entire budget, then grab the whole thing, get four of your buddies. Now you got, you know, the legislative majority, and they can't hire or fire anybody. They can pass laws. They can pass laws that affect everybody in the department, and they can bankrupt the department. So there's, uh, city council's got substantial power, substantial power to investigate all the city's employees, to build libraries, to dedicate street and alleys for whoever, the power to make contracts. So that's huge contract power. Then the surety bonds, that's loaning power, the licenses and permits. They can create new departments, passing laws, motions, ordinances, resolutions, and the power to appropriate funds. So they have some budgetary powers they should try to you know, take that entire budget so they got more power when it comes to the funding. Take that entire budget and then just reconcile with the city manager's budget instead of just kind of tweaking the city manager's budget. You get to develop that power. That's power. Soft power. It's money. The purse strings. So that to figure out all the express powers that the city of Pueblo, a charter home rule city, has, and it has a charter. So specifically, all the powers that I just mentioned that really gets into the heart of the matter, but there's eight general powers that Colorado's Constitution gives home rule cities. And those eight general powers are crucial. These eight general powers actually shows that the city council, that the Pueblo City's government could be a lot more powerful than what they actually are. For example, number or D, letter D, so Article 20, Section 6, Clause 4, Section D. It says, all matters pertaining to municipal elections in such city or town and to electoral votes therein on measures submitted under the charter or ordinances thereof, including the colon or notice, and the date of such election or vote, the registration of voters, nominations, nomination and election systems, judges and clerks of election, the form of, the form of ballots, ball balloting, challenging, canvassing, certifying the results, securing the purity of the elections, guarding against the abuses of the elective franchise, intending to make... Uh, such elections or electoral votes nonpartisan in character. That's like an entire paragraph. That's the strongest written power that the home rule cities in Colorado have. They get to control their own elections. They get to control their own elections. You can't, you, you can't fuck with that. It says that we get to control our own elections right there, you know, and it goes on and on, not just the election, but the form of ballots, whether or not to challenge the votes, to canvassing, certify, all of it, the purity of the results, all of it. But here in Pueblo City, we don't rule. We don't run our own elections. We do a few things, but then we hand it off to the county. And the county runs our elections. So we lost, what, the right to run our own elections? I think that's an important power because this is essentially a city election, and yet the county wants to tax. The county wants to tax for their jail, but this is a city council election. This is a school board election. There might be, there's one issue with the fire department, and then the county just jumps in and like, yeah, let's go ahead and see if we could raise this tax. The county has very low taxes. They only got like 1% tax or some shit. And we, we only got 2 or 3%, so, but it's 7% total. So here are the eight powers. That's just one power, the election power. There's eight powers specifically. So just run them. I'm going to go down real fast, and then I'm going to go through them. So the municipal officers, the, the Pueblo City gets to choose its own municipal officers. The city manager, the mayor, the city council, the personnel, the departments, all of it. 
So the city gets to create the entire fucking uh, government. The definition, regulation, alteration of powers, duties, qualifications, terms, and tenure of all municipal officers, agents, and employees. So all the municipal officers are created by Pueblo City. The creation of police courts, the creation of municipal courts to run our own elections, the issuance, refund, and liquidations of all kinds of municipal obligations, including bonds and other obligations of park, water, and local improvement districts. So that means the big thing there is bonds. We get to take out bonds, and then when it comes to the park, water, and local improvement districts, we get to do what we want, sell, buy, sell, and uh, invest. So the consolidation and management of park and water districts, kind of small one, the assessment of property in city for taxes and levy and collection of taxes. So the power to tax. And then eight or H, the imposition, enforcement, and collection of fines and penalties for the violation of any of the provisions of the charter. So fines and penalties. If you break the charter, then Pueblo City can fine you. You break the charter, we can fine you. The assessment of property, we've got the power to tax. We've got the power to take out loans. We have constitutional powers here in Pueblo City to form our own government, to create all of our municipal officers, to create police courts, to create municipal courts, to run our own elections, to take out bonds for park and water and local improvement projects, or to sell them, the consolidation of park and water districts, we can do that, the assessment of property, so we get to assess property values and then tax them, and then the imposition, enforcement, collection of fines and penalties. So those are the eight powers. Those are the eight powers. Fines and penalties, assessment of property, taxation, consolidating park and water districts upon majority vote, and then the bonds, refund and liquidation, park, water, local improvement districts, running our own election, creation of municipal courts, creation of police courts, and the creation in terms of municipal officers. Those are the eight constitutional powers. I, have, I read just the general understanding of what a police court is. The, a police court is the lowest level court. It's the lowest level court in common law jurisdictions. So common law is when there's no written charter, there's no written document, kind of a Wild West thing, so common law is just sort of common sense. Common law, common sense, this is just how we're going to run things. So the police, they can, uh, it's a court of record over minor breach of police kind of, uh, you know, violations. So breach of police or breach of peace. So if you breach the peace, then a police court, they can, I think this wouldn't be a bad idea because they start the court there, so they can deal with the thing right then and there, and then the police court has the power to bind over for trial in a superior court or grand jury. The power to bind over. So this sounds like they can detain you but not arrest you. The city council has the power to hire and fire the municipal judges. So that's actually an important power that I didn't list in my ten powers. And that's huge. That's a big thing, too, because that's the entire judicial branch. So since the Pueblo City is constitutionally protected to have police courts and municipal courts, then that means we get to set up our entire judiciary however we see fit. The city council can hire as many judges as they want to. They can hire, you know, four out of seven. If you get majority vote, you can hire as many municipal judges as you want to. And then you can define those judges to do exactly as you want them to do. And then regulate, alterate, duties, qualifications, terms, tenure. You get to write out all that. So when it comes to the municipal courts, Pueblo City gets to establish their own police courts and their own municipal courts. I don't know of any municipal or any police courts that we have here. And then we only have one municipal judge, just one. In the police courts a little bit more, just, you know, it's a court of record. So they're going to say, you know, you uh, littered on the sidewalk and I'm going to uh, give you a ticket. So the, it's a breach of peace, give you a ticket, and then that's probably all they need to do, right? If they need to go to a court, maybe come to a police court for this day, if you want to say that you're not guilty. And then they have the power to bind over for trial. So it seems like the police can detain you and they can hold you for the real court or for a grand jury, but if it's something small, then they hold you, ticket you, then they can let you go. So police courts, it seems like they could be a good idea if they were run by citizens, if it was a citizen oversight board. Now, the municipal courts, I think a municipal court thing is huge because the city council can hire unlimited. They could hire 50 new judges if they want to. 
So if we're having a problem with the crime, right, so that's the eight general powers that Colorado's Constitution gives out to every single city. The creation of police courts, the creation of municipal courts, the creation of municipal officers, all of them, the entire government. Then to run our own elections, to take out bonds, to take out loans, to tax, to consolidate the park and water districts, to set up local improvement districts, to invest in, to tax, to assess the property, and to tax, levy, collect taxes and to put out fines and penalties for any violation of the charter or the ordinances adopted in pursuance of the charter. So to get fines and penalties, to have punitive measures to make sure people are listening to what city council says. So what city council says is what should be done, and if they have a problem with the enforcement of it, then they can fine and penalize everybody. So you can't fuck with those constitutions.